Before we talk about the M1, in 2015 to 2018, I traveled for three years and that's where I found my love for cameras. However, there's just one moment I just need to share with you. It's my boy, Ben Kinraid. This never gets old. I play it every single year, send it to him on his birthday. Casual three into a skier in New Zealand. Just unreal. If you like that, go follow him on Instagram. His stories are bloody hilarious, so make sure you get around it. Ben's from the UK. We spent four months together in New Zealand, became best mates, just like that. I can't wait to see him again one day. But, you know, alas, this is what the world is. I miss you, bro. We'll catch you soon. Let's get stuck into some M1 shit. I'm Jed. Thanks for stopping by. And if you're new here, go down, hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, give it a big fat thumbs up because that is unfortunately all that helps this channel grow. And I really, really appreciate it. So a story of how I got into this whole M1 game. I had a $6,000 16-inch MacBook Pro and I just had so many issues with it. I was constantly just back and forth with Apple with it in and out and after six months they gave me a brand new one and unfortunately for me the next six months was just a mirror of the first six months it got to the point where my 2015 macbook was actually faster than my six thousand dollar six inch macbook pro anyway so it got to the point apple just refunded my money onto a gift card while i worked out what i wanted to do this is right at the same time that rumors were circling about the m1 i even thought about renting an iMac for six months for 1200 bucks. But then I thought, what if the computer that I wanted hasn't come out by the end of that six month lease? And luckily the M1s did come out, just not the one I was after. And thus I took a punt and I bought the Mac mini as a meantime computer. Essentially, instead of renting an iMac for 1200 bucks for six months, I figured I could buy this for $2,000 and then when the time comes, move it on. And probably by moving it on, I'll actually probably lose less than $1,200, which would have been the same price as renting the iMac and only been out to have that for six months. So that's what I did slash am doing. For those of you that are new to my channel, I shoot a lot of photos and a lot of video. It's my work, it's my hobby, and it's everything in between. For my photos, I shoot them on a Sony A7R4, which is 61 megapixels and 125 megabyte raw photos. So that uses quite a significant amount of processing power. Similarly, when I shoot video, right now, I'm shooting on the Sony A7S III in all intra, which has some pretty hefty codecs to edit. That $6,000 MacBook Pro I had, couldn't even play back two to three frames per second of A7S3 footage. I wish I was joking. I just got two duds straight in a row, very unfortunate. Granted, that computer did have problems coming out of every corner of it. However, the A7S3 does have some pretty hefty codecs to edit, and I've got friends with Intel machines, and they do struggle with the same codecs as well. So now we know what I'm working with. What are we working with in here? It's a Mac mini. I added a one terabyte SSD and 16 gig of unified RAM. If you want the same setup as this, it'll cost you about $2,000 Australian or a couple extra hundred bucks if you want to add on the keyboard and the trackpad like I did. Also, it's important to note that most of this review will apply to a MacBook Air M1 or a MacBook Pro M1 as well. So let's start off with the general use of the computer. Applications open pretty quickly and it's very responsive. However, that's exactly what I expect from a computer in 2021. So what we actually care about. Let's talk about Final Cut and we'll move on to Adobe later. First off, the rumors are true. It is super impressive in Final Cut Pro. I was shocked at how quickly it rendered, how quickly it applied effects, it previewed effects, transitions, heavy color grades, multiple cam clips, adjustment layers, you name it. This thing is pretty damn incredible. And more importantly to me, how quickly this thing edited A7S3 footage. Playing back in better performance or better yet, best quality mode, this thing would just slice through A7S3 footage like it was no one's business. Meanwhile, on my more expensive computer or higher end Intel machines, glitchy AF. So it's actually pretty nice to wait it on. One of the jobs I work at, we use a Mac Pro. It's got 18 cores, it's got 96 gig of RAM, and it's bloody expensive, and it's clearly no slouch. However, if I had the choice, I'd rather edit on my M1 Mac Mini. It's smoother, it's quicker, it's faster, it just feels nicer to work with. Which is pretty crazy to me because if you're someone who just spent a lot of money on a high-end Intel machine, it's probably gonna royally piss me off. So far for video, it's, it's all good news, right? It's almost too good to be true. By far, the biggest downfall for me for video is lots of the plugins I use aren't yet compatible with the M1 chip. I've got hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of plugins that I can't use because the developers haven't made them be able to work with an M1 chip yet. And obviously, they will make them compatible. The one thing that sucks though, is that when I'm desperate to use one, I can't use it and I have to keyframe that effect myself. So if you're heavy on the use of plugins and you think of the switch to an M1, perhaps consult your plugin maker and see what the go is. Photoshop and Lightroom to me, feel just as normal as on an Intel machine, even when they're working via the Rosetta emulation layer. 
I didn't notice them to be overly fast or overly slow and I know this will get better as they get optimized over time. The only little hiccup that I've noticed is let's say you've made 10 quick changes in a row, 10 quick brush strokes or healing brush or something like that. It'll probably get hung up on eight, nine and 10 and then it will all happen at once. Kind of like that. But yeah, Adobe will get faster and faster as they get more optimized for the M1 system. I think they might've actually just had a Photoshop update literally as I'm recording this. I refuse to use Premiere, so I can't tell you how that works. However, my short time with After Effects, I rarely use it, but the time I have used it with the M1 wasn't great. I don't think it was anything due to necessarily the performance of the computer or the chip. Um, I just hate After Effects. One key I do find is that you can't have more than two high power or high performance programs running at once. So if you run Photoshop and Lightroom, Photoshop and Final Cut, Final Cut and Lightroom, that seems to be fine. However, if you choose two of those or try to stretch it to three or add web browsing and iTunes to the mix, the price tag starts to catch up with it. Remember, this is only a $2,000 machine. I just can't help but feel like it shouldn't be this good. This machine is realistically made for word processing, college students and Netflix. And because of that, I kind of always feel like I'm crossing a jungle bridge made of bamboo and and river reeds and it's just about to collapse but it never does and every day i just get a little bit more trustworthy and i keep going back across i really think that this is the new standard for entry-level computing and it's going to be really excited about what the future holds for 16 inch macbooks or imacs or mac pros when they're using apple silicon what those things are going to be capable of blows my mind so if you're watching this video you're probably asking yourself should i buy one of these and to me the answer is not that simple, it needs to be broken down into a few parts. What are you doing? Are you a college student that needs word processing and Netflix? Are you a casual photo video shooter? Or are you just trying to start out with your photo video business and you don't have an endless budget? If so, this is a great choice and so far for me, it gets the job done every single time, even after the heavy loads and the stress that I've put through this machine. And even after all that, it just seems to work. Now, if you consider yourself a pro in the photo video game, I think the answer is purely circumstantial. If you find yourself in a situation like I did, your Intel Mac just isn't keeping up anymore or it's just dropped dead on you, and you've got some shit you really need to do. If you can put up with the quirks of being an early adopter, like the plug-in issue, then yeah, this machine is gonna be wicked and it's gonna get you through to whatever it is that you're looking for. The 16 inch MacBook Pro, the iMac, the Mac Pro, etc. This will tie you over nicely. But if your computer is currently fully functional and you're in that higher end tier sort of customer and you're looking to make the switch to the M1, I think I'd hold out and wait to see what's to come. So in summary, it's an absolutely great machine that doesn't make sense that it's able to do what it does, how it does. And if you need it, go get it. But if you don't, then I'd wait. And just like that, you've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you did enjoy it, please hit the subscribe button, ding the bell, give it a big fat thumbs up because that's what helps this channel grow. And I'm super duper appreciative. Let me know something in the comments. Let's have a bit of a chat. Anyway, on that note, go listen to some anti-flag, if you like punk music, check them out. They're bloody awesome. I'll catch you next one. Bye! I was always inclined to make history, but I never really had the time. Spent my life living dangerously Never worried how I'm getting by I'm out here working Trying to do what I can I'm out here sweating Dripping blood from my hands Doing what I'm good at Just doing what I'm made for Just doing Trouble comes for me, it was always gonna find me out. I'm gonna keep on walking around me. Don't <laughs> touch me now. That's me getting a screen grab for the uh the thumbnail. <laughs>